Okay, so today, first thing is we're going to identify what makes a function a function based upon these relationships. So here's a table. I'll zoom in. That's better. So look at these top two things. The first thing you have to know about a function is this. If there's ever two lines coming from one domain, or if there's ever two of the same x's, two lines coming from the same domain, or two of the same x's, then it is not a function. So for example here, look at this first one right here. So this one's not a function. Because there's two lines coming from, this is our domain right here, this is our range. Because there's two lines coming from one domain, we know that's not a function. What would this one be? Function or no? Yeah. Absolutely not, right? There's three lines coming from it. Anyone, anything more than that is no. Okay, look at this one. So, this right here. So, we're not looking at the y's. All we're doing or the ranges. We're just looking at the x's. Are all the x's different? Yeah. So, it is a function. Okay, what about this one? Why no, Tanner? No, no, it's the function. Because there's two negative twos, it is not a function. Everyone see that? Yeah. So if, now look, you can have a, you could have like a set of ordered pairs like this, like this, like this, and like this. So you could have a set of order pairs like that, and that is a function. We don't care about the y or the range. The thing that determines if it's a function or not is the x or the domain. Okay, because x and domain are the exact same thing. So let's look at another one. So this is a function. Right there. Even though all the ranges are the same, all the x's are different. Okay, look at this one. So I'm going to call people. Everyone stay quiet. The top one. Um... Gavin, function or no? Yeah. How? Good. Okay, this one right here. Um, Corbin, function or no? No. Why? Okay, good, because there's two of the same. Okay, let's go to this one up here. Um, Braxton, function or no? Function. Good. One line going from every domain is definitely a function. Oh, this one right here, Kellen? No. Why? Because there's two ones. Good. Any questions on that? How to, that series, how to sit, tell if something's a function? Okay. The next way we determine the function if it's by if it passes the vertical line test. So every single graph, graphs have a lot of different shapes, right? They can look all kinds of funky ways. We're going to see a lot of really funky ones here in a second. If, if you can draw a vertical line at any point and it hits the graph at two parts, it's not a function. So look at these real quick with me. Okay, so I'm going to look at this one. This actually is a function. Now, if we draw a vertical line right here, it hits this graph line and it actually goes through that circle. But that open circle means that that part is not included in that line. So this actually is a function. Because you can't do a close, well, because this, so the way you'd write this is negative one is greater than, I mean greater than x is greater than one. That's the way you'd write that little line, this line right here. So it goes to one, but it doesn't touch one. So this this guy right here touches one, but this one down here doesn't. So what about this one? Yes or no? What do you think? If I draw a vertical line, how many times do I hit that graph line? Twice. So that's absolutely not. It only can hit the graph line one time. What about this one? This is a function. No matter where I draw a vertical line here, that is a function. Can anyone tell me the name of that shape? What? This has a name. What is it? Starts with a P. It's called a. Does that look like a five-sided figure? Right here. 
It's called a parabola. <laughs> so what about this one, Daxton? If I draw a vertical line, how many times do I hit this graph? So yes or no, Daxton? No. Okay. All right, let's look at this one. This one just has a lot of random dots on it. But the key is, are any dots on top of each other? No, 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 no. So this one actually is a function because no matter where I draw a vertical line right there, I'm only going to hit one dot. But this one right here, if I draw a vertical line right here, I hit two dots. So that is not a function. Okay, we got one more of these here. Once again, we got another one of these squares. So, Kennedy, is this a function? No. What about this one, Tanner? Function or no? If I draw a line right here, Tanner, how many times do I? It's not, right? Because if I draw a line right there, I hit the lines two times. Yes. So, do you have to put the line in a certain spot? Nope. Anywhere on the graph, the line can go. But only the graph one, it No, because at any point, if you can draw a line and it hits the graph two times, it's not a function. Okay, what about this one? Braxton? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, it is. Because I, I only hit one dot. Um, what about this one, Mallory? No. Why? Nice. Okay. What about this one, Janae? No. Whoa, look at that. Yeah, it is a function because I no matter where I draw vertical lines, I'm only going to hit the graph one time. Nope, that's a sign. That's a that's a sign function. Okay, what about this one, Noah? Function or no? No, because look, I hit it twice. Okay, all right, take your journals. Oh no 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 no. Anybody ever watch that guy in the wheelchair that lights the firework right next to him and his name's Terry and this is great? Terry, get out of there! Terry! Who oh, no, knows, Terry? Who no. I've never ever seen that. No, you have. Okay. Look at this one with me real quick. Today, so on top of this, we're not only we're not just going to identify functions. But we're actually going to solve function equations. So everyone look at this problem right here with me. It says the functions f and g are defined as follows. Functions always have names f, g, or h. And the way they're abbreviated is right here. f of x or g of x. So everyone say this with me. f of x. F of x. Say it with me. f of x. F of x. G, of x. g of x. That's how you say this. So right down here where it says f6, this is pronounced f of 6. So say with me, f of 6. G of negative 2. That's the word of functions. Okay, function has its own individual language. Okay, so right now we're going to learn how to solve these kind of functions. Remember what I said. A function, every function has an input and an output. So in this case right here, it says, so right now we're just going to look at the f function. Okay, f of x equals negative 5x plus 2. So right now, all we're looking at is that function right there. And then it tells us f of 6. So what it's saying is this. Here's, the, here's my f function. f of x equals negative 5x plus 2. What is f of 6? That's what it's asking me. It's saying that 6 is the input. So if you notice right here, we replaced x with 6. Does everyone see this right here? Yeah. We replaced f, I mean x, with 6. So what we're going to do is we're also going to replace x with 6 in the equation. Everyone see that? Mm -hmm. And then we're just going to solve it. So negative 30 plus 2 or negative 28 would be the answer to that. Okay? 
Now look at, so that's the F function. It tells us that when we plug in 6, we get negative 28 back. Now look at the G function. So this one, G of X equals negative 3X cubed minus 2. And then it says find G of negative 2. So now it says in the G function, we're going to plug in negative 2 for X. So we're going to go negative 3, negative 2 cubed minus 2. And then you're going to go through and you're going to simplify that. We don't care about this now. All we're worried about is just solving the equation. Now, this is where it's going to come into play, like I talked to you guys about with the parentheses raised to the exponents. Because if you go negative 2 cubed, you should get negative 8. So we're going to have negative 3 times negative 8 minus 2, or 24 minus 2, or 22. So when you plug in negative 2 in, you get 22 back. Does that make sense? So all you're doing is you're replacing the f function 6 into the x. The g function, which is negative 2, they tell you to do in for the x. So look at this one. Look at this top one right now, and then we'll work on the bottom one here in a second. So it says the f of x equals negative 3x plus 1. And then it tells us find f of 2. So Tanner, what do I do with that 2? So Braxton, what do I do with the 2? Plug it into what? So f of 2, we're going to plug the 2 into the f function like that. So the 2 gets put in for the x right here, which turns us into this, which in turn is going to give us negative 7 as our solution. Okay, remember the f function goes with the f. The g function goes with the g. So we're going to have, now we have g of negative 3 equals 2 times negative 3 cubed plus 6. So now it's saying, here's negative 3. We're going to plug it into our x and we're going to solve. Does anyone know what negative 3 cubed is? Without plugging it into their calculator? Don't think. What's negative 3 times 3? And what's 3 times 3? What's 9 times 3? And it's a negative. So this is actually going to be negative 27 plus 6. Which in turn is going to give us negative 54 plus 6. Or negative 48. So when you plug in negative 3, you get negative 48 back. So nothing changes, right? You guys can see that hopefully. All you're going to do is the f function, f of 2, you're going to plug it in, the 2 in for x in the f function. g of negative 3, you're going to plug negative 3 in for x in the g function. Okay? Look at this last one. I want everyone to go through real quick inside your journal, and I want you to do the f function. Don't do the g one, just the f. Go. No, I usually don't. <laughs> and they say that a hero can save us. With him I don't have to be sad. You know. Huh? Well, I already won American Idol. Uh, Alright, so everyone should have got to here. Yeah. Who in here got plugged it in right like this? Raise your hand if you plugged it in right. Look up here. Who in here plugged it in right by replacing, putting the 5 in for the X? Okay, as soon as you're to there. We get negative 25 plus 4, or negative 21. Raise your hand if you got it right. Good. Okay, but now look, now this is going to be weird. So now I'm going to write it down here so we can have a lot of room. 
g of x equals 4x squared minus x. And then it says find g of negative 5. Okay. But how many x's are in the original function? 2. Two. Does it matter? No. We still replace the negative 5 in for x. But pay very close attention when you do this. Okay, one thing I'm actually working a lot with my kid, he's in, I think he's in Miss Hershey's math class. I always, he's actually a pretty good math student, but I always tell him all the time, he could be better if he slowed down and paid attention. Because he goes through stuff so quick that it costs him. Pay very close attention because this problem has a couple tricks in it. When you go to plug in this negative 5, we have 4, negative 5 squared, minus a negative 5. Okay? Notice, when I plug something into an equation, I put it in parentheses. It's very important you do that also. By doing that, I can see two things. One, I, what's negative 5 squared? Not negative 25. So we have 25. But what is, when we have two negatives together like this, what does it become? A positive. I had a guy one time, if you put it in parentheses right, I had a professor one time that said, look, when you have two negatives together like this, if you connect the negatives and there's a parenthesis, it turns into a positive. Okay? So what are there? Okay, and then we multiply and we add. And there's your solution. Kind of wrong, right? Braxton. What do you do with like G and This is the this is just like so another way to abbreviate these kind of things up here is just Y. So it's like you're solving for a variable. This right here is like a variable. So That's you so you don't do anything with Nope. It just it's it's like it's it just be right here. Part of your answer kinda of at the very end. But it's just like saying x equals this. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's just like a fa really, it's the function where we're writing a variable. Good question. Jackson, mm -hmm. shut up. Strike two. Strike three. I put you in Percy's timeout place. <laughs> Head down over here on the desk. Okay. <laughs> New assignments on Alex. Go. Yeah, but I just wanted to let you know that I finished that lesson before you got excused. That's all. That's for you, man. I did that one for you. Not for anyone else. That's for you.